Hello and welcome back to another episode of Straightforward Tanks. In this video I'll be showing you how you can paint the Dunkel Gal camouflage that was commonly used in the European theatre of war. And as always I'll be painting it without using an airbrush, just simply using normal brush techniques and I'll be using the Army Painter range of paints and brushes to do so. So here we have the Panther I'll be painting as part of this tutorial and as you can see I've already primed it and I've done that using the Army Painter's Desert Yellow Spray Primer. And this is because it gives us a really good Dunkel Gel uh, base coat in which to kind of build up from. Now the first task in uh, kind of painting this miniature is to lighten up um, the overall colour. It's a little bit too dark at the moment for everyone. So we want to get some uh, highlights as well to improve some definition. So we'll be applying a dry brush over the entirety of the tank, all the uh, kind of areas that will be painted with this Dunkel Galb and we'll be dry brushing them with Skeleton Bone. For this sip I'm using my Monster Brush as it gives me a really nice large area of coverage and I've uh, added the Skeleton Bone to the brush, removed most of it by wiping it onto a piece of paper so I've only got a very small amount actually left on the bristles. I'm going to be dragging this across the surface of the tank and this will just pick out the edges and a little bit, remove a little bit more there. Um, and then if it, it'll work particularly well across these Zimrit areas as well. As we'll just pick out the ray section, so I'm just lightly brushing across the entirety of the tank with this technique. So as you can see here, now that we've uh, completed the dry brush, all of the raised areas have been picked out nicely, giving it a little bit more definition. Now the next step is to apply some of the camo stripes. Now during 1944, um, the factories were primed red and then the Dunkel Galv was painted over the top. And these were then shipped to the soldier at the front who would then uh, paint them themselves. The maintenance corps of the particular armies would uh, paint them with um, rot brown, which is like a, a reddish brown, and an olive grunt as well, which is olive green. Uh, now this, these were often applied in lots of different ways, be it through an airbrush, uh, normal brushes, or even just a mop with a rag on the end. So there's lots of different variations in camouflage patterns and also how they were applied as well. So this time I'll be applying the green camouflage first and I'll be using army green for this. So instead of using a normal brush, this time I'm using some foam that I got from a uh, packaging of a blister pack and I've dipped it in the olive green as you can see there. And what I'll be doing is I'll be applying this uh, kind of like almost in like a stippling slash dragging motion across the surface of the tank. Uh, I'll be roughly doing kind of um, some stripes patterns. Um, however, you can be quite varied in your application, which really is up to you. As I said, often there's lots of different uh, patterns applied, but generally speaking, they were kind of in stripes and uh, blotches. So I'll be doing this across the entirety of the tank in several different stripes and variances. So the first set of camo has been completed and you can see we've got this uh, un completely ununiform um, stripes going across the tank. And as I said, you can apply this in any way you really want to. Um, you can also see just the feathering on the edges of the stripes as well. You can see it gets quite uh, loose as if it's been uh, smeared on with one of the mops that I uh, mentioned earlier on. So the next step in applying the camo is to apply another set of stripes, but this time we'll be using fur brown instead. So fur brown acts as an excellent substitute for rot brown, which is obviously the, the red brown. I'm just going to be applying this similar to how I did in the previous step, just kind of spattering and then also smearing it on quite loosely, just in a kind of a stripe pattern. Sometimes intersecting with the stripes, the green stripes we've already got, and other times kind of diverging from them, just to get a nice ununiform pattern across the entirety of the tank. So with the red camouflage completed, the next step is to apply a little bit of grime to the miniature. It's looking a little bit too clean at the moment. We want to just uh, darken the overall colour of the actual main armour, um, apply a little bit of grime into the recesses, just a generic amount. So we're just going to be using uh, some soft tone ink and applying this as a fairly watered down wash across the entirety of the miniature. So this time, instead of using um, a little bit of foam, I'm using my large dry brush. This is because it's a really nice flat area, gives you a good amount of control over the brush when you're applying it over the area. You can just let's see I'm applying it over Zimmerick painted paste here. And it's just uh, kind of pooling in the recesses, adding a little bit more definition, but not darkening the miniature too much. And we're to applying this across the entirety of the miniature. So here we have the Panther, as you can see the soft tone ink has created some nice definition in the recesses, both on the Zimmerick coating and also in the grooves on some of the stowage as well. Now the next step in painting this miniature is to pick out all of the tracks, painting the track sections, and for this we'll be using Oak Brown. Now by painting Oak Brown onto these tracks we create this nice mudded track effect, and it kind of, I've mixed in a small amount of water here just to improve the flow as it kind of pulls into the recesses a little bit better. I'll be applying a, a second coat after this 
first quick coat and I'm using the large dry brush again uh, this time however when you actually come to paint the areas uh, inside the, where the road wheels are you may have to use a smaller brush such as the, the Monster or even the Regiment brush. So once you've completed painting the tracks the next step is to paint all of the uh, storage equipment such as uh, these entrenching tools, the machine guns, uh, both on the hull mounted one and also the pintle mounted one as well and also the rubber lining of the road wheels as well. We're painting all of these areas with a matte black. So for this step I'm using my uh, regiment brush just to pick out the edging of these road wheels, the rubber lining. Just being very careful here not to overspill. See it's very carefully picking that. The same goes for any of the other storage items. I'd recommend using smaller brushes for these steps as they are a little bit more fiddly. Just uh, The great thing about this matte black is it's actually got quite a high pigmentation level so even when you're applying it over this quite light base colour it actually covers really nicely even just with one coat and I've just mixed in a small amount of water to improve the flow here. So once you've painted all the black areas, the next step is to start painting some of the wood areas. This includes the stowage items and also the, uh, the stock on the machine gun as well. Now we're painting the stock with uh, fur brown, similar how as I did the, uh, the camouflage, and then the actual stowage items, I'll be using uh, leather brown for those areas. So for both these areas, I'm going to be using my regiment brush as it gives me some better control over where the paint goes. It allows me to paint these areas without overspilling onto the, the black areas or the armor. I'm just painting this box leather brown and I'll be painting the, the actual stock of the machine gun fur brown. So after you've completed the wood areas we can now start moving on to the weathering. Now before you do that I would recommend applying any decals to the miniature that you want to apply and also going over with a, a bit of a varnish as well just to make sure the, the decals are secure. The next step is uh, to apply a little bit of damage to these decals as uh, the paint did get chipped and removed as the tank took damage. So what I'm going to be doing is using a similar stippling technique as I did to apply the camo stripes and I'll be applying this over the top of the decals using fur brown, skeleton bone and also uh, army green where applicable. So once again I'm using my uh, scrap piece of foam here. I'm just going to be dabbing it on over the top of the decal and I wouldn't worry too much at this stage if the, the skeleton is a little bit lighter than the base colors. We can go over there later on with another wash. So I'm just applying it over the top there just to obscure the numbering slightly. I'll be doing this across the entirety of the miniature wherever I've got these decals, but you don't want to apply it too much, but you just apply small amounts where possible. Now the next step in weathering the tank is to apply some mud around the skirts, the, uh, the road wheels and also the tracks as well, and for this I'll be using leather brown. So using my large dry brush again, I'll be focusing this around the, the bottom skirts, I'm basically going to be applying this in a motion where you'd expect mud to accumulate, I'm just going to be dry brushing it on in different amounts, some areas quite thinly here, and then just get a little bit more paint on my brush, and then in other areas applying a little bit more thick, as you can see there. Now this will be applied all over the road wheels where you'd expect them to accumulate, such as in the recesses and also uh, the track themselves as well. So once you've finished applying all the mud around the tracks that you want to, uh, we can now move on to start um, applying some weathering and dirt to the rest of the miniature, and for this we'll be using a wash of a strong tone ink. Now when applying this wash we can apply it in a number of different ways. First of all we can just wash over the entirety of areas such as these wooden boxes and this just to give them a little bit more shading in the recesses. In addition to that we can also apply some dirt and grime that's accumulated in some of the edges in the recesses. So if I just bring around the turret here you can see we've got this hatch and I can just directly apply the wash into the recesses there. And if you want to as well you can also apply some drips just by dragging it down the bottom and then we can also pick out some of these skirt panels here darken up the mud at the bottom give it a little bit more variance in color so you can really apply go mental with this with your application apply as much as you want to um, just to don't apply too much in one go as you it's quite difficult to get it back once you've applied too much and sometimes less is more so as you can see following the previous step of the wash of strong toning, the tank has left a lot more grimy and dirty, especially around the tracks there. Now the next step is to apply some paint chips to the armour and for this we'll be using matte black. So once again I've got my sponge foam for this step and I've dipped it in a small amount of the matte black, removed most of it onto a piece of paper so I've only got a very small amount left. I'm just going to be focusing this around the edges of areas you would expect damage to occur such as the bottom of these tracks and if I just lightly dab you can see it creates this nice chipped paint effect along the bottom. You can apply it in uh, stronger amounts by 
Let's just uh, move over to the front here so you can see it sees a little better. Aiming it around the corners like so, and it looks like uh, paint has been chipped off and damaged somewhat. And we'll be applying this across the entirety of the miniature, where, wherever you would expect paint chips to occur. So the very final step in painting our panther is to pick out some of the metallic areas and this includes the MG at the top on the turret here and also the hull mounted one and also any of the stowage items such as the spade, the axe and uh, some of the items around the side here as well and we're picking these out with gun metal. When painting these areas we want to keep them quite dark so I've got my uh, regiment brush here and I've removed most of the paint off there it's going to be very lightly picking out the edges like so just to add a little bit of slight metallic reflection to them, nothing too much there, we don't want to uh, overpower the metallic colour. And here we have the completed tank. Now whilst I've used Warlord's Panther tank for this, you could apply the same techniques to any late war German tanks. Now if you enjoyed this tutorial and would like to see more, do let me know in the comments below. Also subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my future videos. Additionally, if you would like to support me in making more tutorials, you can do so by heading over to my Patreon page, where you can donate to me from as little as a dollar a month, which will just help to support me in making more videos. So, until next time, thanks for watching, and goodbye.